Nazi anti-Semitism was, of course, a form of hatred and a form of disdain and contempt, but it was something else. It was an interpretation of ongoing events. And it was a worldview. And this worldview solved, or presumed to solve, rather, various riddles of world history. So the riddle of 1939, or rather, excuse me, the riddle of, of um, 1941 was the following. After Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union, the Prime Minister of Britain, Churchill, announced on the, on the BBC that Britain would aid the Soviet Union. And so for Hitler, the fact that Churchill would aid the Soviet Union was mysterious. Why would this famous colonialist, this, this man who praised the British Empire, who despised communism, why would Churchill want to aid the Soviet Union in its hour of need? Um, uh, now, there were perfectly plausible reasons as to why Churchill made that decision, because he regarded the Nazi regime as the primary threat to Britain, uh, and that the only way to win the war was to ally with the Soviet Union, and that would be the commonsensical interpretation of his famous speech of June 1941. But for the Nazis, the fact that the British wanted an alliance with the Soviet Union, and that the Soviet Union wanted an alliance with Britain. Why would the communists want to ally with the imperialists? That made no sense. So none of this made any sense to common sense, but it made perfect sense in the context of a paranoid conspiracy theory that the Jews had established a connection between the Soviet Union and Britain. And Nazi propaganda made this point, Hitler and Goebbels made this point in their speeches and essays, that the reason that Britain and the Soviet Union had formed an alliance was because of the power of the Jews. Now, the anti-Semitic conspiracy theory uh, as an interpretation of the Second World War applied to the United States as well. Why would the United States not adopt the policy of America first? America first. America first. We should not be involved in Europe's problems. It's none of our affair. America first. That's what Charles Lindbergh said, Father Coughlin, the anti-Semites in the United States, the quote, isolationists. This doesn't concern us, what's going on in Europe. America first. And Hitler asked, why would the United States, which has no national interest whatsoever in what happens on the European continent, be interested in intervening in this war. This is a mystery as to why the United States would involve itself in this war. It's none of their business. But now we have an interpretation as to why the United States is intervening in this war. It's because Franklin Roosevelt is the President of the United States, is because Franklin Roosevelt doesn't believe in America first, because he is a traitor to American national interests, and because Franklin Roosevelt has been captured by the power of the Jewish lobby and his Jewish pals from New York, from New York City, the center of Jewish power. And that is why, in opposition to the national interests of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt is driving the United States into a war against Nazi Germany. And why Franklin Roosevelt and the United States are forming an alliance with the Soviet Union. So yet again, the anti-Semitic conspiracy theory of the Second World War demonstrates why these mysterious events that otherwise are completely inexplicable to anybody with an ounce of common sense, why would the United States bother itself with a war in Europe if it wasn't for the power of the Jews in New York who are sending non-Jewish boys to Europe to lose their limbs and lose their lives so that the Jews can win a war that they will benefit from and become very wealthy as a result of. And that's what the German government told the German people. And, um, uh, and they told it to them again and again. And the, um, the longer the war went on, um, <clears throat> the more the war came home in the form of the air war against Hamburg and Dresden and <clears throat> many other cities. When 600,000 German civilians died under uh, the bombs of the British and American air forces, um, when whole working class districts went up in flames and people in Hamburg uh, jumped into the, the canals of the city and died in the boiling water in a firestorm, 
uh, horrific events. What Joseph Goebbels said, the propaganda minister, was that the Jews have done this to you. It's the Jews who are gaining revenge. You see, we were right. We said they would come and kill us all, and now they're doing it. 